Hey everybody, it's me Mavish once again back to face recognition tutorial series of after almost a year and I'm really sorry about all the delay to you know answering your to your requests but I was really busy. Uh, and this time when I'm back I have a little bit experience for the for helping the 64 bit users so that's a good news by the way. Uh, now uh, back to our tutorial, and uh, this is level 4C part 2, uh, designing a faces database for a face recognition system. The rest of the parts, you can always uh, see them at fututorials.bravesites.com. Now let's move on to the learning objectives of this tutorial. The first one will be to have a look at what is a faces database or training set. Then we'll answer the question, what exactly do we store in a faces database? Then where do we get these face images from? The, logic and the logical steps in, uh, involved in storing these uh, faces to a training set. And then very two important questions. That is how to implement a faces database and design and create a faces database in MS Access. Now in question number five, we'll have a look at two things. Now what should we use as a faces database? That is, what are the different ways to implementing a faces database? And then we'll select a method, which happens to be uh, doing it in MS Access. Now moving on to our first question. So what is a faces database or training set in the first place? Well, it's just a collection of faces of those people, also called subjects, that your system is built to recognize. For example, these are the three people and uh, these are the three subjects for whom we want to make a face recognition system, which is supposed to recognize them whenever they come in front of the camera. Now, uh, just remember the faces database may also be called a training set in terms of machine learning. Moving on to our second question. So what exactly do we store in the training set? Well, it's pretty obvious that we have to store face label pairs and the face that is the face images with their names. So once again, we have our three subjects back and now this is a face naturally and this uh, the subject one string is actually going to be the name or label for this uh, subject for subject one, which could be a social security number or your own created ID, for example, a combination of letters and numbers. Uh, it could be anything. It totally depends on how you're making a system and what you're making a system for. Now, question number three is where do we collect these face images from? Well, you take multiple snaps, a set of snaps of each person's face who your system has to recognize such that each person's set of snaps covers all his or her possible face expressions, the postures, light conditions that might be possible at recognition time. That is the time when your system is finally going to be running and uh, there's a person in front of the camera and then the recognition is being performed. For example, let's take a collection of these people. Now, these three people are the ones behind Yale Faces database. Maybe you've heard of this database uh, because it's widely used in you know, testing for faces recognition algorithms. Now, as you can see, that there are about 12 subjects in this collection and each subject has more than one, definitely, a set of snaps associated for one subject. And this set of snaps, I, by the way, I just kept two snaps per person, but there were, um, I think, 13 or 14 uh, images per person. Now, what they did was they captured various expressions. As you can see, this is normal, subject one normal, and subject one surprised. And they were happy, sad, with glasses, and etc. That is a different story, which expressions you need to capture, what lighting conditions you need to capture. Um, that, and that totally depends on uh, your system's requirement. And we'll have a look at that in, in a separate session. However, as you can see, that all the people that you want to recognize, you must have their all variable possible expressions that they could have at the time when they're being recognized, and all the lighting conditions, darkness or brightness, or light from the left side or from the right side, it, it is all supposed to be captured in your faces database. Or the, the better you capture the variations in uh, the uh, in your in the faces of a subject, the better your recognition system is going to work. A word of caution, though: use the same camera to collect and recognize faces. Now, who the hell makes such uh, mistakes? You know, well, I did, and trust me, it was a very big pain. 
what I did was I took I collected the images of my subjects with my HD camera my Sony camera and then what I uh, I didn't know better back, back then and then I used my Logitech webcam um, in my system to detect and recognize them at one time now I had a big trouble the quality of the images of uh, both the cameras were very different so I had to go through all the pain to ask my subjects to kindly sit once again in front of my camera and I had to take all of their images and I had to extract all those images and then again I had to create my faces database so this is from my own experience and I just want to save you from the trouble if you're headed that way okie dokie so question number four, logical steps to store faces in the faces database. Well, they're pretty simple, uh, in a matter of speaking at least. You take an image of a person and then you uh, detect the face, then you gotta extract the face and then you also label your face and this label fa pair, the uh, face label pair is going to be sent to your faces database. So let's list it once again, detect and extract a face label the extractive face and send it away into your face label into your faces database okay question number five a very good question how to implement a faces database now what do we use as a faces database or training set there are two options in my view which are simple simple to implement one is a fold as a folder in Windows, and the other is as a table in a DBMS, for example, MS Access. Now, it totally depends on what you're going to choose, and whatever you choose, uh, just remember that you must design your recognition system accordingly. We'll have a look at them both, but first, I want to uh, address my 64-bit users. Uh, you see you should be aware that if you're using 64-bit installer of any version of EMTCV, then the code to use MS Access database will be different and compatible with mine because mine is targeted for a 32-bit system. How the uh, how is it problematic? Or what were the troubles or whatnot? Well, that's a different story. And when we get to you know implementation of the coding, I will address this issue. But uh, if you want to. Uh, I think resolve it right now or you want to change your settings to 32 but I think you should have a look at a level 0 installation configuration guide on EMG CV for 64 bit users I have for both 32 bit users and the 64 bit users I recently added this because now I'm finally using 64 bit windows and I know it's all it's very troubling so there you have it anyhow moving on to our main point now, ways to implement a faces database. So I said one could be to create it as a you know folder where each image each image will be the you know face image itself and the file name of the image is going to be the identifier. For example, let's have a look at our Yale faces database once again. And these are our subjects with this being the face and this being the label. You could change the label to anything you want. Now, as it happens, everything has plus points and the negative points, so we'll have a look at both. The plus points of using folder as a training set is that it, it's simpler to it's simpler code to access data. How you just have to read a file, and you just it's a simple line of code to write a file. It's faster to manage. For example, you have to update a face, you have to change this face with another image, you have to delete many people from your face's database or add more. You can just do it like you do in any um, Windows folder by right clicking and cut, paste, copy, whatnot. And then there's no design database design dependency. Well, of course, it's just simple, isn't it? But on the negative side, you see, uh, this t training set is not going to be secure. The faces are viewable first, but more importantly, anybody can, you know, uh, cut it out, edit it, or mm, manipulate it in any way. Then it's trickier, trickier and limited as a database. Trickier. How is it trickier? Well, you see, uh, it's not tough to read or write a file into a folder. That's the easy bit, but making sure that your label is associated with its correct image and uh, that is a tricky part i was stuck here a lot uh, and it took me a lot of time to develop a logic and then code it and finally it was a big pile of code so or uh, maybe you could be more efficient than i am and maybe it'll work great for you but this is just what i found and so i shared 
Now, moving on to our next option, creating a FACES database as a table in a DBMS. Okay, so this is the final look of your, the FACES database as it should look in MS Access. Now, training set one is just the name I gave to my FACES database. And as you can see, it has three columns, face image, the face name, and the face ID. Now this is long binary data, don't worry about it. This is just the format that Access stores an image as. So um, yeah, the face name, as I said, could be anything. I just gave the file name as it was. You could put your social security number or whatever you're using as face name. Face ID is kept here for the sake of uh, making each record unique in Access Database. If you've uh, read, if you've studied databases, then you know that a primary key is needed and so on. Now, what was the good points and what were the bad points? Good points were that it's a powerful as a proper database, of course. Uh, the data is secure, faster in performance. Data is secure. Okay, I'll go through all the points. Powerful as a proper database. You can, uh, you know, unlike in the folders, you couldn't associate a whole record of a person containing their profile. For example, their age, their name, their home address, their staff designation, whatnot. You could not keep that uh, very efficiently in a folder as you can keep it in, uh, in, in a database because here you can create another table and then you can link tables together and then you can you know make relations put on SQL queries and everything so it's a very powerful tool as a proper database then the data, data is secure as i told you that this is the form that access keeps an image as if you double click it it's not going to show you an image the face of the person that's been added it's just going to show you i don't know what but in order to read this face again, you'll need a proper software interface. That is, uh, you'll have to you know, decode it back into an image and show it to the person who's uh, looking at it. So it's secure in my view. Then it's, in fa it's faster in performance. Now this was totally empirical. I performed it and that's why I know that it was faster in performance than my code to use a folder as a database. Then, of course, there are negative points too. The managing and adding faces, managing and adding faces require a proper software interface. Just to read the face, to view it, if it's secure, it's also problematic. You have to code to access uh, all the records, to update records, to delete them, add new ones, and this and that. But it's worth it. Then this system becomes design dependent. Now, this is a very big issue if uh, it's too much I, if you're in a very basic level of face recognition your system has not got to do too much with you know designing proper records together and what so I don't think so you should go for this option but anyway you see uh, the system becomes design dependent is that if I switch the face name and face image columns with each other then my system is not actually going to read this record successfully. Why? Because it was coded to read this sequence of columns. When I switched both, my code had my code was hard coded to read face ID, face name, and face image. Now I wanted to, I want it to read face image first and face name later. So it's not going to do that for me. It's not a, such a nice guy. So yeah, uh, system becomes design dependent, but it's still a better option. So which is better? I think I was talking about it earlier too, but let's summarize it. You make the choice, it totally depends on your needs. If you successfully code all the needed courtesies of accessing data in a DBMS file, then it's the best practice to implement the database concept in an efficient and official way, or at least I think so. And if you develop a good foolproof logic to use a Windows folder as a FACES database, then it's as good as using a simple MS access table as a training set. Now, which are we selecting and why? Well, implement the training set as a table in MS Access, as I discussed earlier. Why? Well, to learn to design and create a database in a proper database management system, like as an MS Access, for, especially for those who have not yet uh, learned to code um, accessing and reading data files for MS Access. And then connect our C Sharp Windows Form application to MS Access and read write data from or to our Access database file. And besides, it's a better method too. Sounds like too much work. Well, I hope to make it short and I hope it'll be worth the effort.
So what are we waiting for? Let's design it in MS Access. See you there.